do is I like to work through a problem. And uh, what this problem is, what we're going to do is we're going to work on some compound interest. And so to do this problem, what they're saying is, uh, actually, let's read out the problem here. Uh, oh, it's the wrong section. So in this problem, what it's asking us to do is to find, actually, that's saying to fill out the, fill out the table. But it says complete the table to determine the balance A for P dollars invested at rate R for T years and compound at N times per year. So it probably doesn't make any sense, but let's take a look at it. What they're asking us to do is to find the value of A, which is going to be our final amount. So uh, what I'm going to do is I, A is going to be my final amount. All right. And when dealing with A equals final amount, we also like to write in, you know, kind of like maybe final amount or final balance. Sometimes it's a good word. And this, this compound interest can become very important, like when we're talking about, you know, if you want to invest like $100. Well, after so many years, at what rate, compounded for how many times, what is your final amount? That's where A comes in. This marker shot. So they say P equals 2,500. Well, what does P represent? Well, P is going to represent your initial amount. So going back to the example I previously said, if you are going to invest, um, if you're going to invest like $500, $500 would be your P in this example. However, for this example, they just said you're going to invest, you know, the do number of dollars invested is going to be $2,500. Then they have R, which is a percent, which is you're going to be your interest rate. And one important thing to remember about interest rate or your interest rate is we need to have it in decimal form. All right, so a lot of problems are gonna give you the percentage. Make sure when you plug it into the equation, you're putting it in decimal form. And the last thing they say, T equals 20 years. Well, T is always gonna be in years. All right, and the last thing, N. What N means is how many times you're gonna compound it, right? Um, so what that means is when I'm talking about compounding, how many times am I going to take my interest and compound it on my, on my amount? So N equals number of times compounded per year. So I chose a couple um, up here. First one I chose is once a year, like annually. So if you're going to say, hey, you invest $2,500 at 8% for 20 years and it's compounded annually. That means it's going to be compounded an annual uh, total amount of 20 times. Here, this would be quarterly. Like every quarter, my every quarter everything gets compounded. So therefore, that would be uh, quarterly would be you know four times per year. Monthly would be 12. So if I say, hey, I want something that's going to be compounded monthly, that would be 12. Continuously, I'll talk about in a second. But as you can see, as the number keeps on getting bigger, monthly would be 12, weekly would be 52, and daily would be 365. And as you keep on getting bigger and bigger, you're gonna get closer and closer, right? You can go minutes, you can go seconds. And you keep on getting small enough, we actually approach a number that's gonna help us get to continuously. So what are we gonna use now? We have all this information, we have all the data that we need, what do we do with it? Well, there's a formula, which is called a compound interest formula represents A equals P times 1 plus R over N raised to the N times T power. All right? So that's our formula. And when I'm going to be doing these problems, it's extremely important, extremely important that you know how to plug in these problems. So I'm just going to do one of these. Um, I'll give you the answers so you guys can kind of see if you got your answer correct. Um, but I'm just going to do one of them just for kind of the sake of time. And just make sure you guys understand how to do your calculator. So there's two different ways I like to do it in my calculator. You can do it one step by step by using the order of operations. Or you can also um, just plug in the whole thing all at once. But when you plug the whole number all at once, you really got to make sure that um, you're using parentheses. Because you're, if you mess up, you might not know where you messed up and you get the whole problem wrong. So we don't know what A is. They asked us to find A. So therefore, I know my P is 2,500 times 1 plus my rate, which over here is going to be 0 0.08 divided by N, which is my compound period. Now, each one of these are a different problem. Let's pick 
12, okay? Can I... Hmm. I'll go and find the answer. Okay, I got it. So, let's, I'm going to do this one. So I'm going to divide by 12, because that's my compounded periods. And then I'll do 12 times um, my number of years, which is 12 times 20 years. OK. So there's a couple ways I like to do this. Now, I don't have a calculator to kind of show you, but I'll tell you exactly how I'm going to do this first. First thing I do is, if I was going to use my order of operations, I do 0 0.08 divided by 12. I get that answer, right? Then you just hit plus one. So you add that to one. Then I'm going to take my uh, what we call my you know raise it to or you know you carry it, you raise it. You're going to raise it to the um, twelve times twenty power. And you want to make sure you put those in parentheses when you're doing that. Twelve times twenty. Put those in parentheses. And then once I get that answer. I'm going to multiply that by 2,500. Okay, so again, the first thing I like to do is I like to divide our. First thing I like to do is I like to take 0 0.08 divided by 12, find that answer, add it to 1. Take this answer, raise it to 12 times 20, then take that whole answer and multiply it by 2,500. The same exact thing goes if you're going to plug this in your calculator. Um, Here's how I plug it in. I plug in 2,500, all right, times parentheses 1 plus, again, make sure you're using parentheses again, parentheses 0 0.08 divided by 12, and parentheses, and parentheses again for this, raise it to your, again, parentheses 12 times 20, and parentheses. And the reason why is here's where a lot of students make their mistakes. One, they forget to put parentheses on the 0 .08 divided by 12. And what happens is a lot of times, sometimes, you know, depending on how they write it in there, they're adding before they're dividing this fraction. Another one is they don't put parentheses around the 12 and the 20. So what happens is you raise it to the 12th power, and then you multiply that answer by 20. So make sure you're very careful on how you actually answer these questions. And I believe, um, when I looked at, when I did this earlier, the answer I got for number 12 is 12,307.01. So that's, fine. that's how you find the compound interest for monthly. Again, if I was just going to do this for quarterly or annually, all I would do is just do the exact same thing, but now I would just... Um, I would just change it to 4 and 1. So I would just write A equals 2,500 times um, 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 1, raised to the 20 times 1. And then for 4, I do A equals 2,500 times 1 plus 0 0.08 divided by 4 to the 20 times 4 power. Okay, so you see how it's very similar? The main important thing I just need to make sure you guys understand is just follow the order of operations. Do your division first, then add 1, then raise it to this power, then multiply it by 2,500. Or if you're going to put everything in parentheses, or if you're going to put everything in your calculator, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure you put your fraction in parentheses before you add it to 1. And then make sure you put your exponent, if you're going to multiply them, make sure you put your exponent in parentheses. This one's not too bad. You can probably do it in your head. 20 times 8, 20 times 4 is 80. So that one's not too bad. But once you get into like some difficult problems, either calculate it beforehand or put it in parentheses and you put it in your calculator. Um, last thing I want to talk about is let's say we have this continuously one, right? So what am I going to do for continuously? Well, I set this number, you know, as we get to minutes, or sorry, to daily, 
and then hourly, minutes, seconds. What we do start doing is we start approaching a special number in our formula. And what that formula, what that number is, is E. And what we come up with is, we come up with a new formula, which is the continuous, our continuous formula, where E is a constant. It's something like 2.785, somewhere around there. So E is a constant. Our P is remains the same, our R remains the same, and so does our T. So again, I believe my A, P is 2,500. E is going to be a constant, which is in your calculator. R will be 0 0.08 times T, which was 20. So again, the same thing. If I'm going to plug this in my calculator, put this in parentheses before you multiply. All right? And what I like to do is I just like to take my letter E, raise it to that power in parentheses, and then multiply it by 2,500. Um, you can also just put them all in there together. Just make sure it's in parentheses. And the final answer for this one is 12,382.58. So really, guys, all you're doing for a continuous and compound interest is you're just plugging in your numbers. You need to make sure you find your initial value, which is P, your final value, which usually you're going to solve for, which is A, R, which is rate, which is in decimal form, T, which is your time, and then if it's continuous, you're going to use E, and if it's not continuous, you're going to use N, and depending on how many times you're going to compound it per year. And just really careful, when you're plugging them into your calculator, make sure you're using parentheses as much as possible to, to accentuate your order of operations. All right? Good.